For this problem, we need to solve 12 sine theta cosine theta equals 3 square root 3. And we're solving it for theta and the interval 0 degrees to 360 degrees. The first thing that we need to do with this problem is get this in terms of one trig function. We can't solve this with sine and cosine. We only can do it with sine or cosine. So, the first thing we should notice here is that we have something that looks very similar to our most important double angle identity. Note that sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. So if we were to divide each side of this equation by 6, we would be left with this 2 sine theta cosine theta, and then we could change it to just sine of 2 theta. So that's what we'll start with. We're going to divide each side by 6, leaving us with 2 sine theta times cosine of theta is equal to and on the right side, 3 divided by 6, we can cancel a 3 from each of these terms, leaving us with just a 2 in the denominator. So we have the square root of 3 over 2 on the right side. And now our 2 sine theta cosine theta will now change to sine of 2 theta. So we have sine of 2 theta is equal to the square root of 3 all over 2. It's at this point that we now have a different angle that we're dealing with. We're not dealing with theta anymore, we're dealing with 2 theta. So we have to change the interval that we're solving over. Since theta is greater than 0 degrees, but less than 360 degrees, then if we multiply all three of these by 2, we'll get 0 degrees is less than 2 theta, which is less than 720 degrees. So when we get 2 theta by itself, we will find all of our answers between 0 degrees and 720 degrees before we get theta completely alone. In order to get 2 theta alone, we need to cancel out the sine, and the only way to do that is to take sine inverse of each side of the equation. which gives us sine inverse of sine of 2 theta equals sine inverse of the square root of 3 over 2. Sine inverse of sine will cancel out, leaving us with just what was inside of the sine, which is 2 theta, and that's equal to sine inverse of the square root of 3 over 2. Now we have to recall, what is sine inverse of the square root of 3 over 2? Meaning, what angle, when plugged into sine, gives us a result of square root 3 over 2? And that is 60 degrees in quadrant 1. But remember, from all students take calculus, that sine is not only positive in quadrant 1, meaning all functions are positive in quadrant 1, but it's also positive in quadrant 2 because of this s. So we have to find the reference angle to 60 degrees in quadrant 2. And that reference angle comes from 180 degrees minus our angle theta. So we get 60 degrees and 180 degrees minus that 60 degrees gives us our second answer, which is 120 degrees. 
If we were just solving from 0 to 360 like the problem originally started with, then we would be finished at this point. Because those are the only two answers, 60 and 120, that give us a positive square root of 3 over 2. But, because we're solving for 2 theta right now, not theta, we need all of the answers that give a positive square root of 3 over 2 between 0 degrees and 720 degrees. Meaning we have to take each of our answers and find a coterminal angle. We have to add 360 degrees to each of them. And when we do that, we get 2 theta equals 60 and 120, like we started with, but also 60 plus 360, which is 420 degrees, and then 120 plus 360, which is 480 degrees. And if we want to get theta alone from here, because we have now found all of our answers between 0 and 720 degrees for 2 theta, we can now divide everything by 2, which gives us theta equals 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 210 degrees, and 240 degrees. These are all the solutions between the original interval we started with for theta of 0 to 360 that solves the problem 12 sine theta cosine theta equals 3 square root 3.